uh, from which, which city? I live in Madrid. In Madrid. We'll talk about the LTE kernel. Thank you very much. Big hand of applause for Alexandra. <clears throat> so, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Alexander Morgado. Um, I'm working right now as a freelance developer. I'm a telecommunications engineer. And uh, yeah, this is my third year talking for them about mobile broadband modems. Two years ago, I talked about LTE, like the technology itself, like all the advantages that come with LTE, and also about um, which, are, which were the changes that we had to do in modem manager to cope with, uh, to cope with uh, uh, mobile broadband modems like LTE modems, multi-mode devices like CDMA devices with LTE or UMTA devices with LTE. Uh, last year, I talked about um, mobile broadband modem protocols like um, the history behind uh, the history behind uh, how you control the modem, like starting from AT commands to all the newest commands, and all the newest protocols that we are seeing these days. Uh, this year, I'm going to talk about two protocols, which are pretty new, or uh, at least one of one of them is pretty new, which are MBIM and QMI. And um, I'm going to talk about how to how you can use them in your Linux machine. Um, it's not as easy as with an AT protocol because uh, it's not a serial device anymore. And uh, you are not going to use PPP, as we are going to see. Um, but yeah, it's, right now it's pretty easy to use them. So what's what's the challenge with with mobile broadband modems? Um, you basically have two channels to communicate with the modem. One of them is the control port. So you need some way to tell the modem to do things, like I don't know, uh, give me the pin status. Uh, is the pin locked? I want to unlock the pin. Uh, I want to register in the home network. I want to register in this specific network. Um, I want to get the signal quality. All of all of that comes from from or within a control protocol that that needs to be handled by the modem. And the other thing that the modem needs to handle is the data connection, of course. So once the once the modem gets connected through the control protocol, you can then start with the data connection in the same interface or in another interface. So until now, what we had was uh, mobile modems using AT commands over a serial port. And uh, one of the commands would get you in connected mode, ATV, so you, you, you connect the PDP context. And then after that, you can st establish a PDP session in the same serial port that you were using for commands before. Uh, that's pretty obsolete right now, mainly because the, if you want to get uh, LT data rates, like good speeds, uh, you cannot use a PPP session because it, it, it introduces an overhead which is unnecessary. The PPP session is only between your device and your host. So it's between the, the, the modem and your PC. It's like an artifact that uh, has been there like for backwards compatibility with, with all the systems that were using that before. So for, for all LTE devices, the main change is that, uh, as I said, there is no PPP session anymore, so the device will export a network interface, like an Ethernet-like interface, which is a W1 net interface, as you can see there. And uh, what you're going to have is like, um, uh, you are going to get the modem connected, and then you can use DHCCP if it's supported by the modem. Otherwise, you ask the modem which are the IP address and settings that I have to set up myself in the network interface. Um, using a network interface, as I said, removes the PPP session, so you are just sending either raw IP packets, depends on the protocol, or maybe even Ethernet packets, so even with an Ethernet header. Um, in the case of MBIM and QMI, we are going to use, uh, they, are, they are going to expose a control interface, which is a character device. Uh, it's a binary character device, and it's uh, uh, working on top of the USB layer directly. There is no serial port involved, and uh, there is no text protocol anymore. You cannot send AT commands through that interface. You, you need to build binary packets with a specific format, follow the protocol, like, um, I don't know, get the session ID, get the client ID, and once you have all that in place, you can start sending messages and receiving responses. So in particular, um, MBIM, which is the first one in the list, MBIM stands for uh, Mobile Broadband Interface Model. It's a new standard from the USB Implementers Forum. It's kind of an extension of NCM, if you know a bit about the USB standards. NCM is the, 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 the standard which uh, allows a USB device to expose a network interface, an Ethernet interface. 
So in the case of NVIM, what it is, it, what it did is uh, get rid of the Ethernet header, which is the main change in the network interface. You don't need an Ethernet header when you're going to connect to a mobile broadband modem. So you can send raw IP packets directly to the network interface. And the other change that they did is that uh, they actually specify a protocol to use to control the modem. So it's kind of uh, uh, like these extensions that were defined years ago for the AT commands in order to work with mobile broadband modems. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's like, th it's the same idea. It's having a standard which is common for, for everyone uh, to use and uh, for, for vendors to use also the same, the same protocol um, to control the modem. So uh, it's pretty new. It's, I think the standard came out at the end of 2011 and it's being pushed mainly by Microsoft because for Windows 8, they actually are requiring, requiring vendors to use this, this protocol. In Windows 8, they're going to have, or they actually have um, kind of a connection manager which works with this kind of devices, with the MBIM uh, devices. So if you want to have a modem which is properly supported in Windows 8, you need to expose an MBIM interface. So there are lots of vendors shipping uh, MBIM capable firmware, uh, like Sierra Wireless, this is a Huawei device. Uh, this is a uh, Sierra Wireless one, which also has, uh, this works with both QMI and MBIM, also this one. Huh? No, 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 this is not the one that you gave me yesterday. That's another one. The, the one that you gave me yesterday, it's a high link modem, which is, um, so he, he gave me a modem yesterday to try to support the modem manager. Uh, that device, it's like, pretty peculiar. I mean, you, you, in that device, you only have one network interface, no control interface at all. But then the device itself has a web server. So you connect to the web server and yeah, you can manage the connection right there in the, in the web server. It's kind of, I mean, it's probably nice for the vendor, but it's a shitty thing for me. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, I have ideas to like, um, um, try to talk to that interface directly from more than manager, like passing HTML and, and sending back HTML. HTTP requests, it's, it's ugly, but I mean, it, if it's the only way to do it, yeah, we, we'll, we'll have to see, we'll have to see. It's the one that is uh, being uh, sold by the uh, biggest, um, at least one of the two biggest uh, operators in the UK, the uh, three, so we are, we are doomed if we don't support it. You should probably talk to the operator then to change that. Actually, I know that there are uh, high link devices, the one that he's talking about, that um, they actually allow to change the firmware. So they kind of have like this Windows 8 version of the firmware, which is NBIM at the end. And uh, maybe you can like switch the firmware and that's it. And you don't have to use the crappy interface, the web interface. I mean, it's not crappy. I mean, they did it with a lot of love, but I mean, it's, not, it's not well integrated in, in our Linux desktop. So yeah, MVIM. Uh, it's available in the Linux kernel through the CDC MVIM driver since version 3.8. So it's also like pretty new. It was, I think it was integrated like uh, January last year and I developed all the tools like by March, something like that. And the other protocol that I'm going to talk about is QMI, which is the Qualcomm MSM interface. This one is like pretty older. I mean, you, you have devices with QMI protocol like from 2005, 2006. Um, they started to develop this, this protocol for the CDMA devices. So there are a lot of like CDMA specific uh, commands uh, in the protocol. But now they are also, they extended it for, for LTE, for UMTS, for GSM, for all these new uh, standards from the 3GPP Foundation. Um, as I said, there are vendors also shipping QMI firmware. Uh, most of the vendors are deciding between one or the other. So even if Sierra Wireless, for example, have their own, um, their own LTE capable firmware based on a network interface and an AT protocol. Uh, they are now starting to, s to switch from that and um, shipping either MBIM or QMI. And in this case, uh, QMI is available since Linux 3.4 with the QMI W1 driver. And the picture of uh, how this all integrates in your system is something like this. So in, in the kernel space, you have both drivers. Then um, on top of those drivers, you have libqmi, libmbim, which, which are the libraries that I wrote. These libraries provide like a simple to use way to, to com communicate with, with a character device that the, the driver exposes. Uh, 
it allows you to establish a, se establish a session, send requests, actually build the, the, the request. You, you get an API to build messages and to pass messages, to pass the responses. And you also get an, uh, some kind of an API to get uh, unsolicited messages coming back from the moon, like signal quality updates and things like that. Uh, it's based on, uh, they are both based on uh, GLib and GIO, so that you, you, what you get is really G objects for uh, masking the device. And uh, you can get signals, for example, when you, when you get an unsolicited message, things like that. Then on top of the libraries themselves, um, we have tools, we have programs now. Um, I started to write a QMI CLI and MBIM CLI like a tester from, for the library, yeah? Uh, the QMI uh, standard, is it open or uh, do you have to just reverse engineer everything? So MBIM is open, of course. Uh, you, you just go to the website and you get the link, yeah? For QMI, you have to log in the Qualcomm Developer Network and you get the documentation. That's it. uh, it's kind of proprietary. But uh, um, you can build software out of it. Just following the, the it's just the, um, from the standard we didn't get many things. We just got the format of the messages, right? Um, that's something that uh, if you don't have the format of the message, you can you cannot do anything. So what we did in QMI and LibMBIM is uh, to encode the format of the messages in a JSON database. So you have a JSON database with uh, explaining which message. Uh, well, like what, what's inside it, inside its message, uh, which are the expected fields, which, are, which fields are mandatory and optional, uh, things like that. And then what we do is uh, we have a Python application auto-generating code, which generates C code to give support for all of those. So it's pretty convenient that, to add new messages. It, it, adding support for one message is like five minutes of work. Which is, it's pretty nice. And we do the same for LibMVIM, even if the building of the message is different because uh, the, the, how the message is structured is completely different to QMI. Uh, I would say that it's better the way they do it in the MBIM or in, in, in MBIM. Now we also have a JSON database. So we, we encode the messages in JSON format and uh, yeah, auto-generate the code for the library. So um, on top of the libraries, we have uh, two common line utilities, which I first developed like as a tester for the library. Um, QMI CLI is the one for LibQMI, MBIM CLI is the one for LibMBIM. And um, apart from those two, la two command line utilities which talk directly to the port, so as, as an argument to the command you pass, which is the, which, which is the character device that you want to talk to, uh, we also have Modem Manager integrated with these, these two libraries. Um, so Modem Manager doesn't really need to know which are the ports that you want to use. It like auto detects everything for you. You just plug in the modem. It, uh, he will get the list of of ports and devices coming from UDEP and uh, detect which which kind of port it is. Because for the for a QMI port and uh, for an MBIM port, it's it's actually the same name. So it's a CDC WDM one or zero. So from, if you just look at the name, you will not know if it's QMI or MBIM or, or MBIM. So modem money can can probe the port and uh, get get to know which is the kind of port it is. And on top of Model Manager, we have an MMCLI, which is another command and client. In this case, we also don't need to specify the port, but we need to specify the, the modem identified by Model Manager. So we have a Model Manager will expose in Dbus an API with all the modems and all the interfaces that the modem expose. And uh, MMCLI will be able to use those interfaces directly from, from Dbus which is what we are going to do right now. Can you see something there? Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, I'm going to start first with an MBIM modem. I, uh, this modem actually has QMI and MBIM firmware, and you can like select which one to use 
based on your dev rule. So you said USB configuration that you choose. Um, shit, it's going to be difficult to do it with one hand. Yeah, so we have here two devices, two character devices. The first one, C, uh, CDCWDM0, is a QMI device that I have embedded in my computer. So my, when I bought the computer, it came, it came with a, a modem inside, and it's actually a QMI modem. Uh, we are not going to use that one because it doesn't have a SIM card. Uh, the other one is the, the MBIM uh, character device. So let's try to uh, send something to it. First of all, I'm going to show the help of the command because I don't really remember all the commands that we have. Um, so MBIM as QMI is organized in different services. So you have a service for a different thing. In QMI, it's, very, it's much more specific. You have, for example, the DMS service, which is, which is the device management service. And then you have the NAS service, which is the network access service. And another service, for example, for uh, data connection, so they are like separate uh, groups of logic. And in the command line interface, I try to repli replicate that organization. So uh, in, in MBIM, there is the basic connect service. And uh, for example, another one is the phone book service. So the, the, the commands are organized based on the service to where they belong. Uh, the basic connection options, they, they provide almost all the things that you need for a normal connection. So those should be enough. So for example, I'm going to query the device capabilities, which is the first one that we have there. Um, um, yeah, minus D here, to select the device. Yeah, so um, this actually is opening a MBIM session with the device, sending a request to query the capabilities, which is an empty request, it's just Give me the capabilities, and then it will come back with a list of uh, or binary message with a lot of information that the program will parse and will show in a uh, human readable way. They actually, they code everything. So uh, GPRS, ads, those are not strings coming from the device. Those are like uh, flags in a, in 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 a, in a bit mask, and uh, we we try to like translate everything. If we run the same command with uh, minus minus the votes. We can actually see all the flow of commands that were sent to the device. So you can see the both binary representation of the command, which is like this one, and then we try to like um, translate also the, the the headers and the contents of the message directly in the logs. This is pretty convenient to debug issues. So at the end, um, using MBIM CLI to control the, the device is about just uh, specifying the port that you have and specifying a command to run. And it's, it's just that. If you know the, the commands to be run, then it's a sequence of commands to run. That's it. For, for the QMI CLI, we have more or less the same thing. I'm going to plug in the other one. This is an LTE device. It has uh, multiple connections for the antennas. You have one antenna for GPS, two antennas for the for the data connection because it needs uh, um, several antennas for the for, for the reception, which is much better. And if we list the files again, ah, oh, not that one. Yeah, now we see that we have another character device, which is the WDM2, and we can use that one. With, with QMI CLI, also to send commands. I'm going to show first the, the help again. So this one has been here for much longer. So we have lots of commands supported. Um, you can even play with 
some devices have uh, the possibility of changing the firmware online, like s selecting one firmware instead of the other, and will reboot the device automatically. Uh, you have commands like for everything, for messaging, for for yeah, all the things that you can do with a modern band. You have commands for that. I d there is no a command for each message supported in libqmi because supporting the command in the command line interface takes much longer than the actual three minutes really <sighs> okay so yeah well you can you can imagine how this will run okay it's like the mbi mcli one but uh, with the qmi command and the other thing that we i want to show is the model manager directly um, so the, the other option is to run model manager to detect the devices and um, get them exported in DBAS, and you can then uh, query information from the device directly through DBAS. So, yeah, I'm listing the devices, which is the previous thing that I did. Um, now I, get in, well, I want information for, the, for one of them. And that's it. Um, you, you get a whole list of things to do. And uh, MMCLI also have, comes with a lot of help options to work with, which is much more fine-grained than the, not the, the previous command line uh, commands. Yeah. The best thing with this is that uh, uh, you have the same set of options for all the different modems. So this will work with QMI, with, with MBIM with AT devices, with AT devices from Huawei, from AT, with AT devices from Sierra Wireless. Um, yeah, we support really lots of modems. And yeah, I think that we can leave it here if you want. No. Yeah, I had some examples here. Uh, if the demo didn't work, uh, just to leave in the presentation. And that's it. Thank you. Do we have time for questions? Or? Any questions? Um, so the Huawei device I have. Um, has some bizarre mode switching f capability for Windows, where it presents itself on Windows as a just just to explain uh, as as a um, just a, a, a disk of some sort, so you can install the drivers. Then the Windows drivers flip, send us a magic a huge magic string that um, converts this into converts the device into a USB modem upon boot every time, and there are various tools in Linux to do that. Um, though from time to time it doesn't sometimes switch properly and I think it's the case as well on Windows is there anything that can be done about this or is it just crappy hardware it really is most likely crappy hardware I Linux we use USB uh, uh, mode switch for that um, which is basically the same so when detects that uh, you have the USB uh, vendor ID and product ID and it, it knows that it has to mode switch to uh, modem and then it sends like this weird string to the to the to the device and then it will again show show up with a different uh, vendor idea vendor idea and product ID. so we we actually do the same if that doesn't work then it's either a back in usb mode switch which could be i don't know or otherwise it's like crappy firmware which i mean uh, really believe me firmware is really crappy <laughs> more questions Um, do you need to have for those modems? Sometimes you need to write custom MUDEV rules. Uh, you had well, that was the case for you, some of yours. Um, for for all these QMIM and MBIM devices, we you don't really need custom MUDEV rules. We usually need MUDEV rules for devices where we Im imagine a device which exposes five AT ports. Only one of them can use be as a data connection. So. And, and the modem will not allow you to like question which is the port for the data connection. 
So in that case, we really need to like hack a US, a UDEV, uh, a UDEV rule to tell on boot, okay, so this modem has this specific port that needs to be used data connection. You don't need to guess anything, use this one. Well, th that's really the only thing that, I mean, we also have rules, for example, uh, because modem manager detects all the devices when they are plugged in. Um, so, and we also support uh, pure serial devices that you may have connected with uh, USB to RS232 uh, device, right, a converter. In this case, uh, we kind of gray list all of, all of those USB converters to serial port because we don't know, for example, Arduino is being picked up by Modern Manager. So we have, we, we have different rules for different things. Yeah. Bastian Nosera told me that it's getting very popular to have the modems built in, uh, uh, GPS and everything, in the laptops. Uh, first of all, is it true that it's becoming very common? And uh, if it is, is it actually being used? Like, do people, like, are people actually using it? You know. So yeah, it's pretty common because the it, it, it is kind of device. So the, the the modem is this one. This is a mini PCI connection, and it, this is what you will get inside the laptop. Uh, uh, plus the SIM card slot and everything. It's popular because it, it you don't need anything else, right? Uh, it's not that popular because you actually need to remove the battery to put the SIM card in. So either you have like a SIM card specifically for that and you leave it there always and yeah, your laptop is connected to the 3G network, 4G network all the time. Or you need to like start uh, taking out the battery, put the SIM card, uh, yeah. So it depends on the person. If you are traveling and you have a SIM card which works everywhere and whatever, yeah. Thanks. Okay, we're going to do a five-minute pause. Um.